they think that they're great. They think either spiritually they're very high or they're very good people. And they're not understanding how deep the ego can be, how much it's fooling. Even if you think you're good, how much the evil of the ego is there that you just haven't discovered it yet. So you're asking the question, when you're driving, there are blind spots and there are mirrors there, rear view mirrors, to help you to see. What are those mirrors for? Is it, are those mirrors telling you, you must love me, you must submit to me, you must do it? It's to help you on your way, on your road, for your safety, no? So your question is, what makes a person not to look at the mirror? Number one, he thinks he's a great driver, fantastic driver. And he is so not concerned about the danger because he thinks he's so fantastic. And he doesn't believe that the mirror is really a mirror, it's really useful. And he doesn't believe that he is a, a driver that needs safety. In this way, in Siratul Mustaqim, you don't need a mirror, you're crazy. Especially in the way of Siratul Mustaqim, in the way of Islam, and in the way of Tariqat, especially that you need mirrors, you need guidance. Because if you take one step in the way of Allah, there's 70 shaitans that are there waiting to derail you. So many times people are going off in the way of Siratul Mustaqim. Allah is reminding us in the first surah of the Quran. He's saying about those two groups, they were in Siratul Mustaqim, but they went off. So that Siratul Mustaqim, the straight way, the path, it is not according to you too, or me, or anyone. It is according to those ones that Allah has said, He has favored them. Who are those? Those are the prophets and their inheritors. It's not you. Are you a prophet? No. Are you an inheritor? No. Then find one and stick to it and be serious. These people, they are not serious anyway. They're not serious about tariqat. Oh, tariqat is just, you know, I'm praying five times a day, I'm doing, I'm a good guy. So this is just to get me to higher stations. A little bit of zikr, a little bit of, just higher stations. That means you, you haven't even come close to understanding your, your ego, your shaitan. Then all those talks, all those nasihats, nasihat is coming from the prophets. But all those sohbats, you're not really taking it too hard and you're not opening, you're not understanding, you're not digesting, you're not doing something, you're not testing yourself too. What makes a person to do that? Not to look at the rear view mirror? Not to look at a mirror, not to take a guide. In reality, he thinks he's okay, he doesn't need one. Inside it, he doesn't. He may say, no, 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 I need you, please pray for me. Yeah, sure. Then this is the thing, what, what, what do you mean by a guide? Majority of the people, a guide means someone just, you know what, I'm in trouble, make dua for me. You know what, I need a better job, make dua for me. You know what, just make dua for me, that's all, make dua for me. This is what they think a guide is, just to make dua. That's how they treat Allah. They want something, just grant me this. But Allah has put so many conditions for you to return to Him. The Prophet has made so many conditions. In Tariqat, there are conditions. Then for you to return, it's not for you to sit and just to ask for du'as and for good things to happen to you. Then you don't understand the journey. You don't understand we're here to return to Allah. Do you understand how dangerous that journey is, how important that journey is. Do you understand the danger that's coming from yourself? So you don't know the danger coming from yourself. Do you know the danger of your ego? Do you know the evil of your ego? You don't. When you don't, your ego will fool you. In this way, your ego will fool you. Outside of this way, your ego will fool you to say you don't need a guide. Inside of this way, your ego will fool you to say your guide is not a guide. Or your guide has deficiencies. Or your guide is this and your guide is that. You know what? I'm not going to follow him. Then what do you follow? Imaginary guide. Whether that imaginary guide is what you imagine Allah is Prophet, 
or the great saints to be, or your own sheikh to be, an imagination, not a living guide. Because you'll find fault with him. He's made of mud. Why I should? He make this mistake. Why I should? He make that mistake. Why I should? Non-stop, continuously. He is an orphan. Why I should? He doesn't know how to read or write. Why I should? What else do you want? A million reasons in front of you when your ego is looking for it. But when you're looking with the nur of Allah, we're looking with some faith, one reason is enough. One. One. But that depends on your desire. What do you desire? You become so spoiled because everything is given to you just like that. It's given to you. In gratitude, Allah is matching so much, saying most of them, they are ungrateful. So you never took that ayat for yourself. You never to see, how am I ungrateful now to my Allah? How am I ungrateful to my Prophet? How am I ungrateful to each other? How am I ungrateful? Of course, American Western style, being grateful means thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's being grateful. Really? And Allah is saying, I'm doing this and you must do this. I'm doing this for you and you must do this. Maybe, saying to his prophet, maybe they will be grateful. Perchance. Perhaps. Perhaps they And subhanahu wa ta'ala soothing the heart of that prophet saying, you are bothering yourself about them. Didn't we tell you? Already, isn't it proof that most of them are ungrateful? So don't. Don't worry so much. Don't worry your heart about them. That's heartbreaking, no? It really is. But how are you going to feel all of that? When you're just so full of yourself. When you're so full of yourself. When you don't feel no pain from no one because your life is good, Yani. Life is great. You're in, not in real need of anything. You don't feel anything for anyone. At least feel something for your prophet, bruh. But you don't. It's just uh, some knots here and there. You cry and that's it. But you're not carrying even just a little bit of what he is with the Ummat. What is a Jamaat? Jamaat is an Ummat. A Jamaat is a microcosm of the Ummat. So you're not concerned about the Ummat. You're selfish. Selfishness will end up in the fire. That's all. We cannot be blind, we are not here blind. And if you're in tariqat and you are more blind, shaitan has pierced through so much barricades that your shaykh has put and has reached. Because you are not looking to see how shaitan is attacking and how to put up those barricades. You're allowing it to happen. Because your heart has shifted too from being concerned about your Lord and your Prophet, being concerned to just, what can they do for me? Even Kafirs are saying, don't say what your country can do for you, right? They say, say what you can do for your country. What are you doing for your Ummah? What are you doing? What are you doing for the sake of Allah today? It's all for your ego. Because when the guide is going to say, this is what you're going to do for the sake of Allah, not this what you think. Oh, but I'm here. What else do you want me to do? Just you saying that is wrong. You're here with your body, but your heart is not here. What is it that you have to do? If that is a sincere question, you will be asking it every single day in all the years that I've known you. And you'll be pursuing that question and you'll be getting answers every time because it is sincere. A sincere question 
you will find an answer for it. Allah will never let any kind of sincerity to drop to the ground. If you're really sincere, you're looking for that. But if you're not, you're like, oh, forget it. You're not sincere, nothing is going to come to you. If you stay for 10 years, you can stay for 100 years. It's not going to work. So, it's not the amount of things that we're doing. It's not. It is how much that you are carrying, and it is going to show. Maybe you do one thing, but you do with that with so much of your heart, with so much love, with so much concern. That time even the Lord of the heavens, you think the Lord is not going to see? He's going to see. Even that Lord, the Most High Lord, will see the intentions of that small ant. And he will mention. So you think that you're sincere? <sighs> Test yourself. Look to see. It's simple. Hmm? You are happy? Why are you happy? Who is happy with you? You are sad. Why are you sad? Who are you sad with? We want to be happy with our Lord and our Prophet and our Shaykh. And we want to be sad with them. This is sohbet. This is association. That ant was very unhappy. He didn't say, well, he's a friend of Allah. Allah will help him out. He didn't say, what can I do? He didn't say because his honor demanded that he do something. His honor. And sharaf, honor comes from faith. So when you don't have that honor, that faith is questionable. That honor demands, I must do something. That honor will demand, I must do something. It's not going to sit still and quiet and satisfied. That's why we're saying the majority of the Muslims, especially in the West, they have completely lost their honor. Because it's just very comfortable. Not doing anything, not feeling, can't even talk. Because you must be very calm and polite and objective. There is no passion. The passion comes when your privilege is touched. Okay. As you like. We will see. May Allah forgive me. These words first for myself and for anyone else who's listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.